Welcome to the Brigham Young University Family History Library webinar series. Feel free to use the chat box for any questions during the presentation. If we are unable to answer them during the presentation, they will be answered at the end. My name is Maddie Acey. I will be your host. Today, we will be pleased to hear from Milan Poanch, who will be giving a presentation titled German Online Sources. Milan is a native German who resides in Orem, Utah with his family. He grew up speaking both German and Wendish, the language of a small Slavic minority in Southeast Germany. He was raised in former East Germany in a conservative Catholic family and would have become a Catholic priest had circumstances not prevented it. Experiencing the hardships of being an active Christian under government ordered Marxist doctrines, he faced various challenges and has many stories to share. Milan joined the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Germany and became the first LDS Wend. He currently works in BYU's Harold B. Lee Library and is accredited in German genealogical research. Genealogy, what he calls the only addiction approved by a stake president, became part of his life when he was 14. He now presents various lectures and keynote speeches at genealogical conventions and church functions, and he conducts annual research in parishes and archives in Germany. For 18 months, he served a part-time mission at the church office building in Salt Lake City, cataloging microfilms of parishes in Slovakia and Hungary. Currently, he serves as genealogical consultant at his stake family history center and as a stake high counselor. Milan also has a passion for history and carpentry. In his early professional career, he restored Catholic churches as a carpenter. He also holds two engineering degrees from German universities and a librarian degree from the University of North Texas. He is able to communicate in a handful of languages. He is the co-author of a Wendish lineage book and has also translated a book and several documentaries from Wendish into English. And now we'll turn the time over to him. Welcome to the webinar, German Online Sources. Please be aware that what I present to you today is far from complete. It just shows you some of the many sources available. If you get the idea what types of records are available out there, you graduated from this seminar. Also, the sources concentrate mainly on Germany and not so much on Austria and Switzerland. These are the topics that will be covered today. We will talk about handwriting, about sources where ancestor could, ancestors could be found. We will talk about gazetteers and maps, about archives, and about a wide variety of other sources that will help you to perform a great German research. Many of these websites are in German, first because it's about German ancestors, and second, Many websites just do not exist in English because the creators of those are Germans and do not speak English. If you have a really hard time reading or understanding German, some browsers such as Firefox and I think also Chrome will offer a translation function for their website. You could also install a program on your computer such as Quick Translator, which is a free ad program developed by Firefox. And there are more than this one. Just browse them and choose what best fits your needs. Let's start with sources for German handwriting. There are sources that teach you the old German handscript, sources that show you the alphabet and various written styles of it and also sources that provide you with old German texts from the beginner level to the advanced level. And if this is not enough, go to Google or any other search engine you prefer and enter German handwriting and then switch to images. If you want to print something in an old German handscript, Feel free to download and install on your computer one or several of these fonts. A link to an instruction page how to do this is also included in a syllabus which you can download here. As you know, 
The German language has a few letters the English keyboard does not have. You can create these letters easily by holding down the Alt key and then on a number pad on the right, type these numbers. And then you let go of the Alt key and the letter appears in most any software program. This works not with a row of numbers above the letters. It has to be the keypad on the right side. Following are some sites where either people submitted ancestral names they are related to, or sources for books where are found names of those passed away. First of all, the largest database, FamilySearch. If you do not have an account, please sign up. It's free of charge. In 2015, they came out with a new design of their main page, and maybe you have already seen it. Some call Family Search websites the Facebook for the Dead. The Family Search catalog is a great resource, a resource of finding lineage books or town histories containing ancestral names, including thousands of books accessible online. Also, a source is the First Search WorldCat catalog that lists books that are held in different academic and also some public libraries. If you find a book listed there, go to your local public library and order the book via interlibrary loan. First Search WordCat has two versions. The smaller is free and accessible online. The other one, the paid subscription version, which includes a complete database and is only accessible for free at public or academic libraries. The complete database does not mean that every book ever printed is included there. WorldCat has a strong university content focus on publications. WorldCat announced some changes that will be implemented. Hopefully these changes will not impact the search functionality for non-subscribers but we will see what the future brings. This is a list of available town lineage books. However, it's not complete. This list is found at the genealogy.net website. Several local archives have also listed their, some of their own lineage books, but these links are not stable and therefore you need to do some Google search by yourself. There are several websites offering complete family trees or name indexes of various kind. In your syllabus are the links to the largest databases, but be aware there are hundreds of them. To find those small ones, use an internet browser and search your family name in combination with your town name. Military research is not easy, especially if it relates to the German Empire. The Austrian military research is a little bit easier, especially if your ancestor was an officer. There are several sites with databases for fallen soldiers of both world wars. Also, there are organizations and archives that ac assist you when you search for a relative that disappeared in one of the two world wars, especially World War II. Also, medical records might help you to find a death date of your military ancestor. I did not find yet anything useful like that for wars prior to World War I. You will also find some emigration respective immigration databases out on the web. Some of them also include worldwide records, not just pure German entries, such as the Ellis Island and the Castle Garden databases. Others are only specialized in German or even in the regional immigration records. Jewish research is quite complex 
and I must admit I do not have too much experience with this. What I can give you are some links to sites where you can learn more about it. Most of the material found online is about Holocaust, but there are also some useful sources there, such as Cindy's List and especially Alemannia Judaica, if you want to know details about a specific synagogue, a specific cemetery, or what survived the Kristallnacht, or in English, the Night of the Broken Glass, which happened on November 9th in 1938 in Germany. Jewish records usually do not exist before the 1800s, but you might find sometimes a list of Jews listed in either Lutheran or Catholic parish records. And just in case, <clears throat> excuse me, just in case you want to decorate your ancestry with a crest, here are three of the most important German websites where you can find information about heraldry. Most of these websites are rather general informative and not focused on specific quests. If you want to know whether or not your hero ancestor had a crest, use the last two links listed under this topic in your syllabus. And since you are already dealing with your noble families, you might be interested in these pages. These websites are those that contain most German nobility. Especially the wiki page looks quite large, but is far from complete. If you need a complete list of names, you need to go to the printed sources, not the online sources. The Family History Library in Salt Lake City has several volumes on their international floor. As soon as copyright expires, they will go online, but this will still take quite a while. You may also search for specific ancestry on the internet. Several existing noble houses list their ancestry online. In case you want to stay up to date on specific subjects or families, you might sign up to one or several mail lists. Again, the large part of those lists are only available in German. This is a really neat tool that saves you time because you do not need to check back at the same page again and again to look whether or not someone posted new content. Works a little bit like the RSS feed or almost like Facebook when you signed up for the notification option. There is one web browser that claims that its content is purely gene genealogy related. Well, you might try it. I tried it too. I entered the keywords of a specific private website that contains information about a specific ancestor, but Mocavo did deliver only unrelated results, but not the specific website searched for. Then I performed the very same search query on Google and found it listed on a second page. What I want to say is don't restrict yourself to only one search tool. Mocavo might find things, especially in databases, not found by other search engines. Mocavo stated that it plans to purchase several databases and promote that content. And maybe in a year or two, the search results will be better. This is kind of a neat tool, a map that shows you present parish borders. You can even magnify the map down to town level. Unfortunately, it has two disadvantages. First, it shows the present day parish borders, not the historical borders you are interested in. If you want the historical borders, I refer you to the print publication Map Guide to German Parish Registers by Kevin Hansen. And second, the other disadvantage is that this interactive map does not cover all of Germany, 
but only a few specific areas in Germany. An alternative for the geographical areas not covered here is to use google.de and type in, in German, the word Kirchengemeindegrenzen, which means church parish borders. Sometimes you need to find a parish address or a phone number of a distant relative in Germany. The German phone books are online and up to date. While typing the town name, a drop down menu opens and suggestions are presented just in case you are not sure how the town name is spelled or in which political jurisdiction it lies today, if there are more than one town by that very same name. And after executing the search, a list of possible hits is displayed. Sometimes it even lists mobile phone numbers and email addresses. Often the parish records are microfilmed, but so far they are only available in German archives. This rather new website is the entrance to a vast collection of Lutheran parish records and a few Catholic registers too, from all over Germany. Not every Lutheran archive has joined, unfortunately. So far have joined the following Lutheran archives, Karlsruhe, Stuttgart, Ulm, Nürnberg, Berlin, both archives, Darmstadt, Kassel, Greifswald, Schwerin, Hannover, Bielefeld, Speyer, Dessau, Kiel and Dresden. From the Catholic archives, only Augsburg joined so far. And the Diocese of Passau is already online through a different website. And Augsburg and Passau are both located in Bavaria. University archives of Mainz and Saarbrücken also joined, but only their church-related materials were put online. The costs are not too bad if you compare it with the archives fees in Germany. The 60 euro deal might be your best option where you receive 20 logins and each login is valid for 24 hours. And with, this, with these logins, you also receive 50 downloads of single images. But before you sign up here, make sure the parish you need is already online and available on this site. Otherwise, you waste your money. Also, the subscription website Ancestry.com has some wonderful German records. Mainly those are civil registration uh, databases for records between 1876 and the early 1920s. To find them, go through the card catalog and drill down by location. The quality of these online records is wonderful. In the year 1875, a new law was passed in Germany, the law about civil registration. Specific offices were established, the so-called civil registry offices, or in German Standesamt. They recorded births, marriages and death. Depending on the shelf space at the local office, these records might be there at the individual offices or in the local archives, usually in the same town where the county seat is. There is a rule of thumb, first contact the local archive, then the archive, sorry, first contact the local office and then the archive. This website will tell you where the nearest office is to your location of interest. If your ancestral town is a bigger one, enter the town name. A better way might be to enter the German zip code and of your ancestral town, which can be easily found on the internet. 
when you have a hit, it will tell you below where the red circle is, what other civil registry offices are nearby. This private website also offers a possibility to learn uh, to let them search for a record and send it to you. You need to fill in their form and pay the fees, which depend on the time they have to invest. 10 euros is if everything is known, for example, name, date, and town, or 40 euros if they have to search through the book. Then they restrict their search to one specific record and also within a five years time frame. Therefore, be as specific as you can when you request something. And this website exists only in German. A quite complete list of state archives was published by the Archive School in Marburg, Germany. Their lists include also other European archives and even archives here in the States. I really love to use their service and these pages are always up to date. They have also a link to other languages such as English, when you have a hard time with the German language, but many of the English pages point back to German content pages. Almost everyone will need some type of software to collect the data gathered. The links provided in the syllabus are sites that list dozens of links to software manufacturers that have at least one genealogy software for free or for sale. It really depends on your needs and expectations, which software you want to choose for yourself. Let's speak a little bit about gazetteers found on the internet. Gazetteers are always needed if you try to find a town of origin of your ancestry. On this and the following pages, I will show you some online gazetteers that you can use. The first one is ancestry.com. The image you see is for the Prussian gazetteer, but there are several more for Germany. And since it is not easy to find, I wrote down into the syllabus the exact steps how to access it. If your ancestry lived one of the 13 Prussian provinces, this is a great tool. It will first show you a general index. And there it will tell you the volume number, the page number and the line number. Then you go to the specific volume, page and line, and it will tell you where the Lutheran and the Catholic parishes were located for your town, where the civil registry office was, the military command, in case you want to check the master rolls, where the local and the district courts were, and also other data like dominant religion, size in population, languages spoken, and so on. The gazetteers stored on Ancestry.com are far from complete, so you will need to consult other, other sources to find your town. For example, Meyer's Orts und Verkehrslexikon, which is also available on Ancestry.com. Very detailed info about every town. Each entry usually consists of three sections. The topographical description, including main services, the population, and the ecclesiastical offices, as well as institutions. And for small towns, a uh, look at is mentioned, there where the big blue arrow is. And since recently, there is a second website available for this very gazetteer. Everything is transcribed in a language you can read and understand, including an image of the original entry. Kartenmeister, 
mostly for towns east of the Eld, uh, Oder and Neisse rivers, which is Poland today. Scroll down and enter your data. This list will show up with all the towns by that name which you entered. Choose one that you think is the right one, and when you click on that name, another window will pop up and listing the jurisdictions and a link to Google Maps. If you prefer an older map of that area, it lists a map number. You can access the map and see the area how it looked more than 100 years ago. That was too fast, sorry. Allow me a comment to MapQuest. MapQuest became the biggest disappointment with the last improvement they made in fall 2014. In an old version of the German MapQuest page, you could enter a town name in a German spelling, even if the town is located today in Poland or the Czech Republic. With a so-called improvement, this wonderful function was gone. The Jews also have a great gazetteer, but it is mostly limited to towns in present-day Eastern and Southern Europe, and also to towns where once the synagogue was found. On a website, you do not care about diacritics. Just enter the town name the way you think it could be spelled. After pressing the search button, a pop-up window will open and you might pick the correct spelling and see the exact location of it offered on different online maps. There are a number of other websites containing gazetteers. An index to those is found on genealogy.net. Let's move to the maps. I already mentioned Kartenmeister. Their maps are very detailed. The online atlas of the German Empire shows you mostly maps with German borders between 1871 and 1914. At Postletlandkarten, you will find most maps printed about the year 1907, but lately they enlarged their collection of older maps. The David Ramsey map collection has a lot of maps more than 1900 just for the German Empire alone. And then there is Ancestry.com, also with very detailed maps in their online collection. What are some of the other online sources that impart genealogical knowledge about German research? Did I already mention the wiki page of FamilySearch? Also, the traditional Wikipedia is full uh, of good sources you might use. And if not found there, the good old Google might be able to help you, or whatever search engine you prefer. With hundreds of thousands entries, the Encyclopedia Britannica might be able to give you the very answer you might be interested in even if it's about German stuff. Conversion from Julian to Gregorian calendar is not as easy as it might look because each state, kingdom and principality switched on a different day. It also depended on the religion your ancestors belonged to to decide which calendar was valid for him or her. The web address provided solves a general problem, but completely ignores the region. And so far I have found nothing online that includes the region. Only in printed collection you might find it so far. What would be a parish record without the mention of a feast day instead of the actual date? In that case, you need a tool that translates between your feast day and the date. The link provided here lists feast days back to the year 900. 
it also exists as an English version, but the English is based on a Scandinavian feast patterns and goes only back to the year 1300. And I don't know why. Sometimes it is necessary to have a dictionary at hand. And since we speak about online sources, then I recommend to use of the Leo, a German-English-German -German dictionary created and updated by the University of Munich. This dictionary is the best I have found so far for these two languages. And if you need Latin, I recommend the one maintained by the University of Notre Dame. Google Translate made good progress in the last few years, but is still far from perfect. Some old German terms, however, are listed there. I entered two of the words not used today anymore within a sentence, and it gave me the correct translation. This tool could also help you if you want to translate parts of a website. Just copy the text from the website and drop it into Google Translate. And don't forget to adjust the language before you do it. Otherwise, you might receive un unwanted results. Please be aware that the grammar is still a big challenge for Google Translate, so I wouldn't count on it. If the word you are looking for is still not found, you might use the German thesaurus. This thesaurus contains a lot of German words already extinct. You might recognize the two guys who originally started the series. They did not only collect fairy tales. It took about the 1980s until the series was finished. I myself already have a problem to convert between the metric and the imperial system. How much harder would it be to memorize all the old weights and measures used over the centuries in Germany, especially since each kingdom or principality had its own system? Additionally to this, a cubit in Prussia was different than a cubit in Bavaria. To make it easy on you, I listed in a syllabus several links to pages with weights and measures of different areas in Germany. Sometimes it is interesting to know how much, for example, 600 gulden were in wages that your ancestor had to pay for purchasing the farm? Or were you ever interested in knowing how much tax was paid in the 1800s? The links provided show different examples for different time frames. Unfortunately, all of these useful links found for Germany are in German. If you ever stumble upon a useful English website for German currencies, please email this to me that I might be able to share it with others. Name databases are also an important tool, especially if you are not sure you are interpreting the name you read correctly. There is a database for given names and a database for sure names. These two are the most complete databases found so far for German names. The right image is GeoGen, the one for family names. This image is version 3.2 and it showed you where in Germany a family name appears most often, especially if you have no idea at all where to start. And this is the result page, and the darker an area is, more people by that name live there today. So it means this would be the 
probably the county where you start your research because the chances to find your ancestor there are the highest. And if still not found, do a Google search for that given show name. In the early summer of 2015, Christoph Steppel, the GeoGen guy, implemented a newer version, the 4.0 version. I have to say I don't like it because you can't see the names of the counties anymore, at least not easily, and it looks dark and gloomy. But the old version is still around, and I have provided the link in the syllabus for you to the old version. If you need to communicate with a German parish, I urge you to write in German to them. Google Translation is not perfect, but a good start. Also, a wonderful help is a German letter writing guide stored on Family Search Wiki. Just replace or insert your names and data which so, with those found there and send the letter off. Offer to pay them, but don't send money in an envelope. The letter might mysteriously disappear uh, between your home and their parish. It happened to me and many years ago, it can also happen to you. You can write in English to any archive, but not to parishes. Because parishes or parish priests do not have an obligation to answer any requests. If you get the records, you will also get an invoice. If you use your bank to transfer the money to Germany, they will charge you a lot. A cheaper and faster alternative is xoom.com. xoom.com. The address is, I think, not in your syllabus, but you might double check. They charge presently only 99 cents per transaction, and they take it out of your bank account. And it takes only two days until the archive has received the money. Banks often take up to two weeks. German word lists are also available on the internet. I have provided two links. The second link in your syllabus, the one for Family Search Wiki, is longer, but it has only the German terms with its English translation, but not the Latin terms. In death records is often recorded the reason for the death of a person. Unfortunately, those recording this information did not always use the exact term, but more or less described the symptoms. In the syllabus, I included three links to German and Latin terms found in genealogy-related records. So far, I have not been able to find a decent list that includes the English translations. If anyone of you comes across something like this, again, I ask you, please send me the link. In the meantime, use the dictionaries and encyclopedia spoken of to explain it or to translate it. Not that you need it all the times, but it doesn't hurt to have it bookmarked on your computer. Genealogical signs and symbols. There are not many of them, but if you interpret one of them wrong, the whole family data could be messed up and wrong conclusions might creep in. The last set of website addresses are, site, are sites that contain various collections of general research tools or further links to sites on specific topics. Cindy's list is one of those commonly known among researchers. Rootsweb, iGenealogy or genealogy.net are also rich sources for various links. Well, I think we are through and we might have time for some questions. 
that we go here through. Mm. Let me scroll up. Where is the syllabus? Okay, Maddie, can you answer it or some? So yes, so for people who are still looking for the syllabus, it's going to be located in that box right above the chat box. Um, if you click on the name of that file, um, you will be able to download it and then have access to it. Last chance. Not today, maybe. All right. Thank you very much. Back to Medi again. Okay, I think a few people might be typing questions. No, just thank you. Thank you very much for joining us um, for this webinar. Uh, just a reminder that um, this will be posted on our website as well as our YouTube page. And for more information about upcoming webinars, make sure to visit our website. Thank you.